ho! Merry Chris Christmas. This video has nothing to do with Christmas, but it's also hot as balls, so I don't I don't feel like changing. We're just we're just gonna do the video. This is my OBS setup that I use for streaming. I've got probably over 50 scenes. I don't even know how many sources I have. I, I've just lost track. I got a ton of effects, like six different camera angles, filters, scenes for consoles that I don't even use. There's a lot going on here. And I know just looking at this might make you feel a little bit intimidated. So to make your life just a little bit easier, I wanted to show you guys a few really basic tips that you can start using right now. Now. These tricks are gonna seem pretty easy, but trust me, pretty much everybody that I know that's at least somewhat proficient in OBS uses some, if not all of these tricks. And they're really just gonna help you keep organized and keep track of all your different scenes and sources so that you can put on a show that looks more like this instead of like this. Real quick, I wanna do a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Nerd or Die. You already know Nerd or Die. They make a whole bunch of graphics and animations that you can use for your stream, and they're currently running their Snowden streamer sale. Everything is 25% off with the code WINTER25. Some stuff is 50% off. Plus they have a bunch of free stuff like some Christmas themed overlays and some icons for your stream deck. They even launched a new tools page which has a bunch of cool stuff like a media looper if you've ever wanted to have a rotating feed of all your different social media tags. Lots of cool stuff, check them out, links are down below. Make sure you use my links because I don't get any money if you don't buy stuff with my links. So the first tip is using nested scenes. This is a tip I've already talked about before but I'm recycling content because uh, I've kind of run out of ideas for videos, but more importantly, I want to make sure that everybody knows what nested scenes are because it's going to be really important when we get on to the other tips. Nested scenes are basically a way that you can layer different scenes and to put it more simply, it's a, it's a way that you can group sources together, but it's way better than the native way of grouping sources together that most people are probably using. Here's a classic example of what I think most people's layouts look like when they first start streaming. So you got your gameplay full screen and then your webcam in the corner. And then you just got a bunch of different text labels for like your latest follower and last cheerer. So let's just say we wanted to take all of these four text labels and add them to our just chatting scene. Well, what I've seen a lot of people do is they just take each of these text labels and then re-add them to the just chatting scene. A better way of doing it would be to create an entirely separate scene. We'll just call this one labels. And inside of here, you would add each of your four different text labels. Once you've added your four sources into its own scene, then you can actually add that label scene into whatever other scene you want. So you can just go into just chatting, right click, add a source and select scene, and then select the label scene that you just created. And you can just move this wherever you want, just like it was a regular scene. One thing you might notice is this box is fucking massive so if you want to make it smaller then you can just hold down the alt key and drag in from the sides and you can actually crop your box up here so it doesn't appear super massive. I've actually done something very similar for my personal setup so if you actually check over here I've got this source that's called HUD which includes all of my different metrics for like my view count, my follower count, my sub count as well as my local time and my live chat. And by the way if you want to know how to get all those widgets I made a video showing you how to do that in the top left corner, top right corner, whatever, where the YouTube puts it these days. But all these widgets are sitting in its own nested scene which is why I can just move them as if it was one source. So if you actually look down here in my list of scenes you'll see a scene named HUD, which includes all of these different widgets. That HUD scene never actually gets displayed to my viewers. It's just there to make my life easier so that I can group different sources together. Another example would be if I wanted to overlay this video of me repeatedly punching myself in the face, instead of adding this media source to every single other scene, what I can do is I can create another nested scene called the webcam scene. And then here I would add in my webcam as well as that media source of the punch. And now instead of using my webcam when I wanna use my webcam, I can just use that nested scene called webcam scene. And back on my gameplay scene, I'm not using my webcam anymore. I'm using the webcam scene, which includes the video file of me punching myself in the face. You can think of it like layering inside of Photoshop. And the beauty of this is that you can put nested scenes within nested scenes and create some some multiple layer deep complicated scenes. In fact, if you look at my setup, my camera on this scene, which is called camera A, this is not my camera. My camera is actually buried like 10 layers deep. In fact, let's have a look here, right? Here's the camera A scene, which contains layer one, which contains layer two, 
layer three, etc., to layer seven. But we're not even done yet because we have this camera A stack, which we go into here, has six different cameras. But wait, I'm not even, we're not even done. These are not cameras. These are actually other scenes. This is where my camera is. It seems really complicated and don't get me wrong, I know that it is, but once you can start implementing nested scenes into your own layouts, then you can start to design stuff that's really professional and seriously impressive. One of these days I gotta do a video going through my entire OBS setup so you can see all the ins and outs and how I've designed everything. So if you guys wanna see that, let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you were paying close attention, you would have noticed that I've got a whole bunch of separators over here. These are literally just empty scenes. There's absolutely nothing in them. I just added the dashes in here so I can visually separate the different kinds of sources that I have in my scene collection. So over here in the streaming section, I've got all these different sources. These are the ones that I actually display to my viewers, but all these other ones, like these sub scenes here, these are all the nested scenes that I have for my main scenes. But I got categories for all kinds of stuff. I got categories for all my different cameras, for all my audio, even different widgets that I've created for OBS, I put them in their own section or their own category. By the way, the idea of using these separator scenes, you don't just have to use this for scenes. If you're more advanced with OBS, you probably have a bunch of different filters and you can use it for filters too. Like if I go into my one of my layers here for my camera, I've got a bunch of different filters just for my camera and I've separated them out for all the different effects that I have running. And all of these separator sources, these are just regular crop filters but I've just zeroed out all the values so it doesn't do anything. So here I've got my barrel roll section to make my camera spin around. And I've got this big head section to make my, my head go huge. If you don't know what any of this stuff is, don't worry, this is for more advanced users, but just for the people that are more advanced, you can use it here too. Another thing you might've noticed is a bunch of my sources have these letters in square brackets in front of them. And I like to call this tagging my sources. So for example, I've got a bunch of A's in front of all my different audio sources, or I've got an I in front of all my image sources, or a B if it's a browser source. It not only just helps me easily identify what type of source I'm dealing with, but also you'll notice that in some dropdown boxes that list all your different sources, it actually lists all your sources in alphabetical order. And so if you haven't tagged your sources, it can be really difficult to find what you actually want to find. But if you tag your sources, you'll see that all my image files are grouped together because I put an I in front of them or all of my color sources which have a C in front of them, I can easily find them here. Just find the naming scheme that works for you. I recommend doing something like for a display capture, you can use the letter D. If it's a video capture device, you can use the letter V. Alternatively, if you didn't want to rename all your sources, you can also set a color for all of them. And then you could do something like for video capture devices, I want them all to be yellow. And then if it's display capture, I want these all to be red. I personally don't do this because you don't get the advantage of the alphabetical sorting. But if you're a more visual person, then this is also an option for you. Here's a tip that I bet a lot of you didn't know. You can actually change the fonts for your sources. So you can see this follower count, I've made bold. If I wanna make it italic, I can make it italics. You can even change the size of the font. This is another cool one. Again, I don't personally use this, but I think it's really awesome. You can actually just rename a source and add HTML tags and OBS will actually recognize the tags and then change the style of the font. So if you wanna make it bold, then you just put B slash B surrounding the name of your source and it'll make it bold. Same thing with the second one. If you want to make it in italics, then you just surround it with the letter I. Just keep in mind, this unfortunately doesn't work for scenes, which kind of sucks because I feel like it would have been more useful for scenes. But if you do it for scenes, it actually doesn't appear there. I don't know why, but like discovering things like this just make me really happy. Probably because I'm just fucking depressed because all I do is sit in this room all day. The last trick is not really an OBS trick, but personally, I'm just obsessed with having an absolutely pixel perfect stream layout. It's just so satisfying, but also, it's also really important if you want your stream to, you know, actually look presentable and professional. I'll give you an example. This is my layout that I use for DS games and I've literally never even used this, but it's gonna come in handy now for this video. OBS has this really cool feature that allows you to turn on this outline so that you can see the outline of all your different sources and the size and position of them. 
It's called using a PNG. So I use a program called Affinity Designer to plan and lay out all my different sources. So I've got all these different rectangles for where I want my different sources to be. And it's just a really nice way to plan out your different scene layouts and get them, get them pixel perfect precise. You'll also notice that I added these text labels in the corner of every source. This just tells me the exact position and size of the source. So when I export this file, it's just a normal PNG, which I then add into OBS. And that PNG file is just a regular image source, which I can overlay on top of all my other sources. So when I'm positioning each of the different sources, like my DS top screen, I can just right click, go to edit transform and copy all of the numbers that I put on my PNG file into each of the boxes here. Then when you're done positioning everything, you just need to hide that PNG file and you have a perfectly minimal and clean layout that just looks so professional for my zero viewer stream. So those are all the organizational type tips I have for you. Was that too hard? I tried to keep it as simple as possible for all you new OBS users. If you're already using some of these tips, let me know which ones in the comments down below. Probably never gonna read any of them, but I'm trying to pump my numbers up so I can get that YouTube plaque. As always, links to the Discord in the description box down below or wherever YouTube decides to put it like eight years from now. And you can also catch me on my Twitch streams. I'm always asking questions for like four hours straight if you guys want to ask me about maybe my own OBS setup. But uh, until then, have a Merry Christmas. And uh, I will see you one more video for the year next week. Don't miss it. I'll see you guys then.